we're talking trigonometric functions of any angle. And the goal is to find the six trig functions of any angle. We're, in other words, in the, ne in the next two sections, actually, we're going to extend the idea of SOHCAHTOA to angles that aren't just acute, right? Uh, so let's, before we talk about that, talk about what it means uh, to be an angle in standard position. So you guys are familiar with the XY plane, right? So uh, the upper right hand corner of the XY plane is called quadrant one. And then uh, the, uh, if you go around counterclockwise, quadrant two, upper left corner, quadrant three, lower left corner, quadrant four, lower right corner. So an angle in standard position, um, well, if you let the initial side of the angle coincide with the x-axis and the terminal side be somewhere in this xy plane, then this angle theta is in standard position. So in other words, the standard position of an angle is an angle coordinatized in the xy plane. Now, as long as you sweep out this angle in a counterclockwise motion, theta is positive. If you go clockwise, then theta is negative. To accomplish our goal of uh, describing the trig functions of any angle in, the, in standard position, we need to talk about the fact that any point in the xy plane, except for 0, 0, any point corresponds to an angle in standard position. And I'm going to show you that with the next example. Also, I'm going to show you how to extend, in this next example, I'm going to show you how to extend the, the SOCA TOA, the trig functions of not just an acute angle, but any angle. Let's go ahead and plot the point 2, 5. So let's go over 2 and up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the point 2, 5, everybody hopefully would agree, might look something like that. So what's the angle then determined by the point 2, 5? Well, you just let the initial side coincide with the x-axis. The initial side of the angle coincide with the x-axis. And the terminal side, you're going to launch from the um, origin, the terminal side, and that terminal side is going to go right through that point 2, 5. Okay? So this angle, whatever this angle is, that's determined by the ordered pair 2, 5, this is a picture of it. We may not know what that angle is yet. We may not even know how to find it yet. You'll learn, uh, but at least we can picture it. Did everybody see how to create that angle? So now, from the point 2, 5, drop a perpendicular and then focus on the right triangle that's created. Focus on this right triangle I'm outlining in green. What would, the, what would this adjacent side of the triangle be? What would the length of this side be? Two, this, this first coordinate from the point, right? And what would the length of this side opposite theta be? Five. And what would the length of the hypotenuse be? No, no, we'd have to find it, right? So let's find it. Um, let's call the hypotenuse R. So what would R squared equal? Two squared plus five squared, x squared plus y squared, a squared plus b squared. It's the Pythagorean theorem, right? Uh, so what does that give us? R squared equals uh, 29, which means R is root 29. Okay, so hopefully you can see now our triangle. And then this, what I'm about to write down is nothing new. The trig functions then of this angle theta, nothing new, but then in the next example, I'm going to extend, uh, show you how to extend the idea of the SOHCAHTOA that we learned in the last section. So uh, let's make some room here. And you guys tell me, uh, this is good review, I guess, uh, sine theta, what's sine of theta going to be in terms of this example? 
5 over root 29. Okay, what's the cosine of theta going to be? 2 over root 29. So you're thinking Sokotoa and these first two, right? The first one, the so part of Sokotoa, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's what the so, S-O-H, stands for. And then cosine is equal to, that's the ka part of Sokotoa, right? C-A-H. Cosine is equal to adjacent, which is 2, over hypotenuse. So nothing new there, right? And then what's the tangent of theta equal to? Uh, the tangent of theta is 5 halves, isn't it? Which is the toa part of Soka toa. Tangent equals opposite 5 over adjacent 2. So nothing new there, right? It's all, all review so far. All right. What about uh, cotangent? Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's got to be 2 fifths. Usually I write secant next. Secant turns out to be the reciprocal of cosine, right? So what would that be? Root 29 over 2. And then cosecant theta would be the reciprocal of sine, which is root 29 over 5. So nothing but review so far, except for creating this angle through this point, through this point right here. That was a little bit new, right? Everything else is, is just what we talked about last time. Any issues there? All right, now, in the next example, same directions, find the six trig functions of the angle determined by, now the point changes to negative 2, 5. So distances are the same, but now wh which quadrant will uh, negative 2, 5 be in? The second quadrant. So I'm going to go left 2 and up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, negative 2, 5 is here. Remember, the initial side of your angle coincides with the x-axis. Here's x, there's y. The terminal side, the, the both, both sides of the, that create the angle start at the origin. The terminal side is created by drawing a ray from the origin through that point. And so the angle that we're talking about is this large angle here, theta. Okay, so how are we going to create then the trig functions of that angle theta? Well, we're just going to generalize what we just got done doing. We're going to drop a perpendicular. So we're going to drop a perpendicular from this point to the x-axis. So we drop that perpendicular like so. And do you guys see now the, the triangle that's created? Okay, what's the so-called length of this side adjacent? Now we still, even though theta is not contained in the triangle anymore, uh, the relationships stay the same. This side, this horizontal side, the way I've drawn it, is still the adjacent side. And what's the directed length of this adjacent side? It's not a true length, it's a directed length. What would that be? Negative 2. So the negative just tells you the direction you're going, but it has the same length, right? The absolute value of negative 2, the distance from 0 that negative 2 is, is still 2. And then what about this opposite side, this side opposite theta? It's still 5. And then the hypotenuse? It's, it's going to be the same as before, right? I mean, when you apply the Pythagorean theorem, you take negative 2 and square it, but th that's the same as taking 2 and squaring it like we did up here, isn't it? You'll get the same thing right here. So you're going to get the same r, the same hypotenuse. So that'll be root 29. So this triangle that I've drawn here, although its placement is different, it's congruent to this triangle I've done up here. It doesn't look the same because I use different scaling, right? But it is congruent to this triangle up here. In fact, this angle here, whatever it is, that angle here, that, that will be the same as theta. Okay? Okay, not this theta, the theta I was talking about in this example. All right? So I've, I've got to be careful about labeling two different objects the same thing. But, but I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so all of the, the, the point of all this is that the trig functions will be the same up to sign, S-I-G-N, right? Some of them might be the opposite of what they were. 
but the SOHCAHTOA is still going to work. Let's check it out. So the sign of this theta now, what's the sign of this theta going to be? The so part of SOHCAHTOA opposite over hypotenuse, so what's that going to be? 5 over root 29, the same as in the first example because these sides are the same length and they're not, neither one's negative, right? 5 over root 29, uh, same as before. But then what's the cosine of theta going to be? A j cosine ka part of Sokotoa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Negative 2, the sine changes over root 29. Does that make sense to you? What about tangent theta? T the toa part of Soka toa, tangent is opposite. What's opposite? 5 over adjacent negative 2, but we can pull the negative out front, right? Negative 5 out. So, so cosine and tangent are the opposite of what they were in the last example. And then, okay, the reciprocal relationships are the same as before. So all we're doing is extending Sokotoa and the reciprocal relationships from what we learned for an acute angle, okay? So usually I write tangent next. Tangent is the reciprocal, or sorry, cotangent, excuse me, we, we just did tangent. So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So what's that going to be? Negative two-fifths. I'm just leaving the negative out front, right? I mean, negative 2 over 5 is the same as 2 over negative 5, and that's the same as having the negative out in front, right? Okay, so uh, usually I write secant next, so secant of theta is, what's that going to be? Reciprocal of cosine, so that's going to be negative root 29 over 2. And then finally, cosecant of theta, what's that going to be? Root 29 over 5. So if you, if you look here, and then let me, let me switch back up top, the only difference is some of the functions are negative, the opposite of what they were, right? But you see how we're really just extending the definition of Sokotoa and the reciprocal functions here? Okay. Well, just to really drive the point home, let's do uh, the same thing in the third and fourth quadrants. So negative 2, negative 5. Okay, left 2 and down 5 puts you in the uh, third quadrant, right? Remember the initial side when you have an angle in standard position corresponds with the x-axis. And then the terminal side associated with this point, you start your ray at the origin and then run through that point. Now, to create the triangle then associated with this point that we're going to, oh, by the way, what's, what's theta in this case? Theta is this big angle right here. It's over 180 degrees, isn't it? That's theta. Now, to create the triangle associated then, with this angle, we raise a perpendicular from, from the point. In each of these examples, I created the, the triangle the same way. Actually, well, let me go here. So from the point, I dropped a perpendicular, right, in the first example. In the second example, from the given point that the terminal side runs through, I dropped a perpendicular. Here, I'm going to do the same thing, except it's not dropping it. It's raising the perpendicular. The perpendicular goes through the x-axis. In order for it to go through the x-axis, I've got to go start at the point and then raise it upward to create this right triangle. Okay? What, what are the directed distances of the legs of this triangle? The, this, side we, this horizontal side, we still call it the adjacent side. So what would that distance be? Directed distance? Negative 2... And then the vertical side would be negative 5. What's the, ra what's the uh, I almost called it a radius, but it kind of is a radius. That's why we call it R. But anyway, what's the hypotenuse of this side in green? This, it's still going to be root 29, isn't it? Because when you plug, 
these values, negative 2 and negative 5 in the Pythagorean theorem, you square out the negatives. All right, so we can expect the same sorts of ratios as before, except some of them will be the opposite of what they were in the first or second example. Okay, I don't mean to bore you to death, but let's do it one more time. All right, 2, negative 5 puts me in which quadrant? That point is in the fourth quadrant. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down here somewhere. Okay, so over 2, down 5, here's your initial side. Here's your terminal side. And the angle we're talking about is now this big angle here. So that angle is theta. But once again, we're going to create a triangle through this point. We're going to raise a perpendicular. And this triangle will be congruent to the other triangles. So, these four examples tell us something. They tell us lots of things, actually. But one thing I want to emphasize, I started to emphasize it, and then I kind of uh, didn't do it in the last two examples. This angle theta here from the very first example doesn't change. This angle here, this angle here, if you can see what I'm referring to, is the same as the theta from the first example, that acute angle here. This acute angle here, same as the theta from the first example. This acute angle, same as the angle from the first example. We're going to have a name for that later on. We're going to call it the reference angle to the triangle. Okay? So keep that in mind. So here's your mnemonic device, memory device, for remembering the, the sign S-I-G-N right? Is it positive or negative? In, in this case, the memory device tells you in which quadrant is the trig function positive. So here's the memory device. In the first quadrant, write down the word all. Second quadrant, write down students. Third quadrant, take. Fourth quadrant, calculus. And the first letter of each word stands for a trig function. All the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant, right? All the trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, look, S stands for sine, right? Sine is positive in the first quadrant. Look, if you go back and look at the exam, or the second quadrant, I should say. If you go back and look at that first example, second example, rather, the sine function was still positive in the second quadrant, wasn't it? It was the same as it was in the first example. Okay. In the third quadrant, tangent is positive. In the fourth quadrant, cosine was positive. And this extends to the reciprocals too, right? So let me rewrite this. Okay, in the first quadrant, all the trig functions are greater than zero. In the second quadrant, the sine, and what's the sine's reciprocal? Uh, cosecant, they're greater than zero. Okay, so it makes sense that the sine's reciprocal would also be greater than zero in the second quadrant. The third quadrant, the tangent, and the cotangent, it's reciprocal, are greater than zero, both of them. And in the fourth quadrant, the cosine, what's the reciprocal of the cosine? And secant functions are greater than zero. And that's just a nice way to remember 
what's what and what and it, well, what that implies also if in the third quadrant tangents positive and it's reciprocal cotangents positive all the rest are negative guys so here's a typical example you're going to see this s sort of example over and over again so given that the tangent of theta is 5 thirds and the sine of theta is less than zero can you find the cosine of theta we actually did a problem similar to, similar to this the other day in the first quadrant remember we used a helper triangle I want you to use a helper triangle again, except you have to, in these examples, determine which quadrant to draw that helper triangle in. So here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis. Look at, it, we, this gives us some useful information. Tangent of theta is equal to 5 thirds. Is 5 thirds bigger than or less than zero? So the sine of the tangent is positive. The sine, S-I-G-N, of the tangent is positive. But the sine of the sine function is negative. So which quadrant do we have to be in? Quadrant three. If you go back and look at our memory device, all students take calculus. We can't be in the first quadrant because even though tangent's positive, the sine is negative. No way can we be in the first quadrant. Does everybody see that? The only other option where the tangent's positive is the third quadrant. So that's one way this memory device comes in useful. You can immediately determine which quadrant you're in. We must be in quadrant three, Q3. Okay, that's what both bits of information give us as far as which quadrant theta is in. Does that make sense? Okay, so draw your triangle in quadrant three. Draw your helper triangle in quadrant three. So theta looks like this. That angle right there is theta. And then your triangle will look like this. You draw your ray, and it really doesn't matter how long you draw your ray, just pick any point along this, tri uh, along this ray that you've drawn for your terminal side of theta and raise a perpendicular, and then focus on that triangle that's created. The size of the triangle doesn't matter because the trig functions are all based on ratios. And no matter which point you pick to draw your triangle at, so if you, let's say you pick this one, and this big triangle here is what you were focusing on. Yeah, those triangles aren't the same size, but they are similar, and so the, uh, the trig functions will be the same because they're based on ratios. Okay. Now use the fact that the tangent of theta, toa, the toa part of Soka toa, use that fact to tell me how to label two of the sides of this triangle. What would the opposite side be? Five, right? Toa, tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So what would the adjacent side be? Three. Can we get the hypotenuse then? Yeah. What's R, R stands for the hypotenuse? R squared is equal to? Five squared plus three squared. Be careful not to call it four, right? If it's going to be a three, four, five triangle, the two shorter sides have to be three and four. One of, one of them has to be three, one of the others has to be four. If the hypotenuse, if one of the, let, let me put it this way, if one of the shorter sides is five, then you don't have a three, four, five triangle. All right, so what do you get for R squared? Yeah, 25 plus nine is 34, so R is root 34. And by the way, R is always positive, okay? R is, it's, it's, we consider the length of the hypotenuse a radius, and so it's always positive. So in this triangle, root 34 is the length of the hypotenuse. Okay, so we want to find the cosine of theta. So let's, uh, let's think about the ka part of Sokotoa. Cosine of theta, looking at this triangle outlined in green, what does the cosine of theta say? Yeah, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What's the adjacent side? Three. The hypotenuse is root 34. There it is. That's it. We did miss something here. So the cosine should be negative in the third quadrant according to that memory device, but do you need that memory device to, de to determine that? Not really. 
I mean, you could use that. I mean, yeah, okay, so, so you know from that memory device, only tangent and its reciprocal are positive in the third quadrant, which means cosine's not. So you can catch that mistake. Now, go back to your picture. Th this is a better way to do it, probably. Go back to your picture. If you go to the left here to get to, let me change colors here. If you go to the left from here to here, and you looked at this as an x-coordinate, right? This point, the x-coordinate of this point, what would the x-coordinate of that point have to be? Wouldn't it be negative 3? And the y-coordinate would be negative 5. We should have labeled it so that this side is negative 3 and this side is negative 5. And then there's no way we'd forget the negative, right? Because when we create the cosine of theta, we would take uh, the adjacent negative 3 over the hypotenuse <laughs> root 34. Okay? Good. All right. Any other questions, by the way? All right. Trig at the corners. Uh, what do I mean by the corners? They're not really corners, but uh, if you think about it, an angle where the terminal side lies on the initial side is zero degrees, right? An angle where the terminal side goes straight up and the initial side is, of course, the x-axis has got to be 90 degrees, right? A straight angle. So initial side looks like that. Terminal side looks like that. Has to be 180, right? Okay. If the terminal side goes down, straight down, got to be 200, just add another 90 degrees because this quadrant, this third quadrant has angle 90 degrees, right? So just add another 90 degrees to 180, you get to 270. Add 90 more degrees and you're at 360. So this is also 360 when you go all the way around, right? Okay, so that's what I mean by the corners. Zero, 90, 180, and 270. What are these values? Okay, let me fill in this chart and then I'll give you an idea of at least where some of these come from, okay? So the sine of zero degrees. The sine of zero degrees is actually zero. Okay? The sine of 90, deg 90 degrees turns out to be one. The sine of 180, zero. The sine of 270 is negative 1. The cosine of 0 turns out to be 1. I'll show you why that has to be true in just a minute. Where the cosine of 90 is 0, cosine 180 is negative 1, cosine of 270 is 0. Now, if you know these first two columns, how can you get tangent? Using, now I gave, I think I gave this to you last time. The tangent of theta turns out is sine theta over cosine theta, right? This is a, it's called an identity. It's identically true for all values of theta on which tangent's defined. And it's useful to know because it can help you remember some of these trig functions of special angles. So what's the tangent of zero have to be? Just create the ratio. What's the sine of zero? The sine of zero is zero. What's the cosine of zero? What's zero divided by one? No, zero divided by one. Okay, zero divided by any constant k is okay. It's okay to do that division, and it's equal to zero. Zero divided by some constant, uh, oh, sorry, I, I already did that. Uh, n, some constant divided by zero, is undefined, and it's not okay. No, right? N-O. This is undefined. I know it's lame, but it's a way to remember it. Okay? So zero divided by one, that's okay. That's zero. Okay, now let's, let's take this, the tangent of 90 degrees. In that case, you get the sine over cosine one. The sine of 90 is uh, one. The cosine zero, is that okay to divide by zero there? 
So we say this is, it doesn't really make sense to say equals undefined, but we say it's undefined. Looks like a zero with a slash through it. That means undefined. What about the tangent of 180 degrees? Sine over cosine in that case is what? Zero over negative one, that's zero. So in other words, the tangent of 180 is zero. That's, it's okay to take zero and divide by negative one, right? And then the tangent of 270, is that gonna be okay? No, that would be negative one over zero, not okay, undefined, okay? This, uh, this chart is another one of those that you need to memorize. Now, where do some of these values come from? Let's do, th this one's always weird looking, the, the, co the fact that the cosine of zero degrees is actually one. So let's verify that one just by drawing a picture. And it's easy enough to draw this picture. Let's, uh, we don't have to draw it in standard position, but I'm going to anyway, because it helps with the others. So let's, um, let's draw an angle that's not zero, but close to zero. Relatively close, that's not actually all that close. But So let's say this is theta, and let's draw up a perpendicular, and let's call uh, the adjacent side x and the hypotenuse r. Then what is the cosine of theta equal to? x over r, right? Everybody agrees with that, right? But what happens in this picture when you bring this angle closer to zero? What, does R, what is R actually going to approach? Or what is X actually going to approach? That would be a better way to say it. So let me, let me see if I can draw another picture so you can see this. Where the angle is closer to zero. So let's say we have this angle here. A little bit closer anyway. And let's say this is our triangle here. And then draw another angle. Let's cut that one in half. Like that. Do you see that this hypotenuse, this, I guess, pink or purple hypotenuse, or rather, maybe it'd be easier to think of in terms of X. So do you see then that when you compare the terminal side in green to the terminal side in purple, the terminal side in purple is closer to having length X, isn't it? Yeah, and in fact, when this angle in here goes to zero, X and R are the same. That's the argument. When theta equals zero, X and R, or let me just say X equals R. X equals R. But doesn't that make the cosine of theta X over X or R over R, which is one? And, and in particular, theta is zero in, in this case. So you could arrive at this chart then by making those kinds of arguments. Finally, the most important thing we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so first of all, uh, a reference angle, looking at, at this definition, a reference angle alpha of an angle theta is the acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. All right, that's kind of hard to picture, so let's draw a picture. Actually, let's draw three pictures. We don't really talk about reference angles in the first quadrant, so let's start with the second quadrant. If you have an angle in the second quadrant, it looks like this. So theta is this guy right here. Agreed? Does everybody agree with that statement? Okay, alpha is, so here's the terminal side. This, this side right here is the terminal side. Alpha is the smallest angle formed by this terminal side and the x-axis. So alpha in the second quadrant looks like this. That's alpha. That's your reference angle. Now, looking at this picture and realizing the straight angle is 180 degrees, if you know theta, how can you find alpha? So guys, this is the formula. 
So alpha has got to equal 180 minus theta. In the, now that's in the second quadrant, which is why I'm positioning this formula in the second quadrant. That works in the second quadrant. In other words, when theta is in the second quadrant, then alpha and theta are, what's the word? They add to 180, which, what's the word? They are supplementary. Okay, but, but it changes if, if theta is in the third quadrant. The formula changes if theta is in the third quadrant, and the way you find alpha changes. So let's go, let's go to the picture in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, Theta looks like this. And then remember what alpha is. The terminal side is down here. Uh, alpha is the smallest angle formed by this terminal side and the x-axis. So it's got to be, does everybody see what it is? It's got to be, alpha's got to be this angle here. But again, if the straight angle is 180 degrees, can you come up with a formula? I'll, I'll put the formula right here in, in the third quadrant. Can anybody come up with a formula then for finding alpha? Well, okay, so here the big angle is not 180 like it was over here, right? The big ang one of the angles we look at is 180, right? And that, that would be the bigger angle. 180 would be, uh, in the first quadrant, 180 would be that angle right there, right? Here the big angle is actually theta, right? Because theta is bigger than 180. So if you wanted to find alpha, what could you do? No, never, ever look at the y-axis when finding reference angles. A lot of students make that mistake. But never, ever look at the y-axis. Always look at the x-axis, okay? If you look at the definition, it doesn't mention the y-axis. Okay, so you've got a bigger number, right? That's theta. The smaller number, or angle in this case, angle measure, is 180. And you want to look at the picture. You want to find alpha, what do you have to do? So it's got to be the bigger minus the smaller, right? Theta minus uh, 180. So theta, the big angle, right? In green here, minus 180, the straight angle. I don't have it pictured here, but there's 180, right? What's left over is the angle in blue, alpha. Everybody see how the formula changes? It switches around. Does everybody see that? That's if uh, your angle is in the third quadrant and you're looking for the reference angle alpha. That's the formula you use. Okay, finally, similar picture, but we're gonna draw it in, we're gonna draw uh, theta in the fourth quadrant. So if we do that, okay, the initial side is, coincides with the x-axis. The terminal side you wanna draw in the fourth quadrant. So that theta then is this big old angle here. So that's theta, right? And then, do you guys see what alpha is? Alpha is this angle here, isn't it? The smallest angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis. The smallest angle. So there's another angle, uh, this angle here, but it's not the smallest. Okay, everybody see that? So alpha is always acute. Your reference angle is always acute. Okay, so Instead of, uh, there's no reason to refer to 180 over here, but I will refer to the fact that if you go all the way around, if you go one full revolution, how many degrees is that? 360. So one full revolution is 360. And theta is this big angle right here, but 360 is even bigger. How are you going to find alpha? So, uh, so alpha is going to equal 360 the bigger angle here minus the theta, which it's a big angle, but it's not as big as 360, right? And alpha is the leftover angle. 360 minus theta, that's alpha. So there's your formulas by quadrant for finding alpha. Is that clear? Everybody see that? 
Any questions? Don't ever look at the y-axis to find alpha. Okay? Never, ever, ever. So um, I want you guys to try this one. Given that theta is 125 degrees, by the way, which quadrant is that? Quadrant 2. I'd like you guys uh, to take a second to try and find uh, the reference angle. Call it alpha. That little fishy looking symbol. It's a Greek letter alpha. Okay? So I'm going to start the picture here. Now let me do it in pink. Okay, so what's alpha going to equal? 180 minus 125, and what's that? 50, 55. Okay, good. Okay, so in pic you don't have to draw this part of it, but in pictures, this part then is 55. And th th but this is what you do if it's in the second quarter. But look at the picture. Uh, in the picture, you, may, you wouldn't have had that right away. But you do know that this angle here is 180. The straight angle is 180. So you can figure out, oh, the leftover angle, that's alpha, and that's got to be 180 minus uh, 125. Okay. Any questions on that? Yes. Uh, angles in the second quadrant. If you think about it, the the angle straight up is 90 degrees. The angle, uh, the uh, angle, uh, the straight angle is 180, and 125 is in between 90 and 180. So right away, with a little bit of practice, right away you'll you'll know which quadrant it is in just by looking at it. 210. 210 is in between what two angles? 180 and 270, which puts it in the third quadrant. Okay, go ahead and try and find the reference angle for 210 degrees. And if, if you need to, and I think most people do, draw this picture, right? And then uh, I'll give you a second to come up with it. Okay, what are you doing to get alpha? By the way, which, which one's alpha? Is, uh, let me quiz you a little bit. Is, is, is uh, this guy alpha right here? Is that alpha? Never, never involve the Y. I can't say this enough. Never, you can see a, stu a few students, I've, I'm excited about this. A few students have done this in the past, right? Uh, never involve the Y axis in finding alpha. Never, ever, ever, ever. Uh, alpha is going to be uh, this angle, right? So make sure your picture is drawn correctly. Okay, so what's alpha going to be? Don't, don't uh, tell me the process for getting it. You take the bigger angle, which is 210, minus uh, the, s the straight angle, 180, and what does that give you? 30 degrees. Easy enough? That's how you find alpha, the reference angle, if your given angle is in the third quadrant. Finally, 315. We'll do that together. If you draw the uh, 315, it looks something like that. And then what's, what's alpha? Got to be, is it this guy? No, it's got to be this guy, right? So how do you find it? Take one full rotation, right? Minus the given angle, and that should be the leftover angle. Alpha is the leftover angle. So alpha, your reference angle, is 360 minus 315, and what is that? 45 degrees. So... In this example, we're going to find exact values of trig functions of, re of angles whose reference angles are special. And all we need to do that is that chart from last time that we memorized, the trig functions of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. 
and how to use reference angles and the sign trick. All students take calculus. Okay? So don't, if you memorize the unit circle, please don't use that, uh, that trick here because the unit circle won't help you when the angles aren't special. Okay? So try to do it my way here because it's going to be more general later on. You're going to need reference angles um, that aren't special later on. Okay. So let's find the cosine of 135 degrees exactly, which means it might in very well involve square roots. No decimals normally when you're finding exact values, unless they're terminating, like 1 half and 0.5 are the same thing. That's fine. Okay, so um, the cosine of 135, let's find the reference angle. The way you do this is you find the reference angle for 135 degrees. Okay, so um, 135 is in which quadrant? Second quadrant. If you need to draw this, but eventually you're going to want to get to the point where you can do it without drawing it. Okay, which is the way I'm going to do it here. So 135 degrees, remember that in the second quadrant, the given angle, so this is like your theta, right? From the previous examples. Remember, in the second quadrant, the given angle and alpha, the reference angle, are supplementary, right? So what would alpha be in this case? 45, 180 degrees minus 135. If you need to, draw a picture just like in the previous examples, and you could get that, couldn't you? Okay, and then, yeah, that's, that's actually 45 degrees. Now, in the second quadrant, is the cosine positive or negative? The cosine of 135, since 135 is in the second quadrant, it's in Q2, quadrant 2, right? It's got to be negative. Which two quadrants is cosine positive in? First and fourth. All students take calculus. That C is on the calculus in the fourth quadrant. So in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. In the third quadrant, cosine is negative. So, okay, so we know the answer is negative. Okay, so here's how you do it, you guys. Turns out, then, that the cosine of 135 is going to equal one or the other, plus or minus, not both. Uh, I'm going to erase one of these in a second. Plus or minus the cosine of its reference angle, 45. But we've already determined it's got to be which one? the minus. So it's got to be the opposite of the cosine of 45. And then the, uh, that's how you get the sine, by the way. You don't have to show this many steps, but I'm just trying to be very detailed here. That's how you get the sine, and then you've memorized what the cosine of 45 degrees is. Maybe not yet, but you will have. So negative root 2 over 2. The cosine of 45 degrees from that chart from last time is root 2 over 2. So negative root 2 over 2, cosine of 135 is negative root 2 over 2. Did everybody see the thought process? Under, any questions? Yes? Because the cosine of an angle in the second quadrant is negative. So let me, let me put that in the notes here. The cosine of 135 has to be negative since 135, 135 degrees is in Q2, quadrant 2. Does that help? Okay, good. Let's do tangent of 330 degrees. Okay, 330 degrees is in which quadrant? Fourth. So um, is the tangent of, so this is just a couple of notes. That you don't necessarily have to show this work. Once you get good at this, you just go right to the answer. But at first, it might be helpful. So the tangent of 330 degrees, since 330 is in the fourth quadrant, right? Roman numeral 4. Uh, does it have to be positive or negative? Negative, right? Wh wh which two quadrants is tangent positive in? Yeah, remember. this. Remember the mnemonic device. All students take calculus. It's in... It's in the first and third quadrant that the tangent's positive, which necessarily means it's negative. Tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant, and that's where 330 degrees is. So I know right away that my answer better have a negative in it. Does that explanation make sense? Okay, now let's find the reference angle. Theta is 330. It's in the fourth quadrant, so what's alpha equal to? Remember, it, you take the one full rotation. When the given angle is in the fourth quadrant, 
you take one full rotation, which is 360, subtract off the given angle, which is 330, that gives you the leftover angle, which is alpha. And it, again, if you need to draw that picture, so what do we get? 30 degrees. All right. So then, and by the way, this is all going to be done in your head later on. Uh, you're not going to need to show this work later on. Once you get good at it, or you, that, that should be your goal, to get good at it enough to, the, to not show this in your head. So here's what you do want to show. So this is what you need to show. Show this. The tangent of 330 then has got to equal the opposite, because it's negative in the fourth quadrant, of the tangent of its reference angle, 30. Okay? Remember those triangles that we drew? Those triangles were congruent. So the, the absolute value of the trig ratios will be exactly the same for any particular reference angle. It's only the sine, S-I-G-N, that differs. So that's why this, this works. So, okay, so what was the tangent of 30 degrees? So, this, so the tangent of 330 will be negative root 3 over 3. Okay? So there's your answer.